So this next project is going to be a retro computer. I bought this kit um, online from a website called Tindy, which serves as kind of a marketplace for people doing uh, do-it-yourself kits and hardware and, and such. I've never bought from this particular kit manufacturer before or built one, but it looked uh, like a really clean design. Uh, so I wanted to go ahead and build it. I'll put up a, uh, a picture of the, the Tindy page here so you can see where I ordered it from. So this here is the highest level of kit that he sold. He called it the Full Monty. Um, it includes this nice uh, backplane. Um, includes components for everything, sockets, uh, chips. Uh, more chips in here. More circuit boards here with a bunch of components. More components over here. So what is a retro computer and why would you want to build one? Well, it's mostly just a nostalgia thing. Uh, similar to the computers that uh, many of us grew up with in the olden days. Um, personally, I had a TRS-80 color computer, which I think used a 6502. I've never had a Z80 based computer before, so I wanted to do something with a Z80. It's going to be quite limited in what it can do by today's standards. Uh, basically, it's going to have some RAM, some ROM, a serial port so that we can talk to it, and a clock generator. So let's see what all came in the kit. So it has this back plane. Um, into this back plane, there's going to be numerous boards that will plug into it. So like here is a, uh, a serial board. Is that right? Yeah, this is the serial board. So, you know, it'll mount on a SIP header, you plug in your serial board. Um, here's a ROM board, so your ROM board could plug in. Here is a, guessing this is the RAM board, so you, another one, have your random access memory. Then you've got your CPU board, so it comes with the backplane, comes with all these little circuit boards, sockets for the chips. Over here we have our big chips, which are the Z80, the uh, asynchronous receiver transmitter for the serial board, a ROM that comes uh, pre-programmed with BASIC and the RAM chip. Um, we've got some 7400 series logic chips here, one, two, three, four, five of them. You know, they go in various places, so uh, one, two, three, four, five 7400 series logic chips. Um, here we have the uh, headers and uh, sockets. And get those out of here. Kind of bound up a little bit on the pins, don't want to bend a pin. So the uh, socket's going to mount on there, like so. And then the header will mount to one of our boards. And then it'll plug in, and that's the backplane design. It's a very simple backplane design. Um, over here we have a bunch of through hole components. There's uh, some small sockets, there's a clock generator board, um, some capacitors few resistors, reset switch, various things like that. So that's uh, that's pretty much uh, all there is to this kit. I think it's going to be pretty uh, quick and uh, relatively relatively fun to put together. Hi, so this is uh, now completely assembled. All of the stuff that came in the full Monty kit. Over here is the back plane. Uh, the back plane um, in the kit only comes with five uh, female sockets. You can add your own sockets to the other three places. Uh, I'm guessing the uh, the guy who sells them only included five because there's only five boards with the basic kit. Um, it does include uh, a power jack that you can uh, plug your power cord into, but it does not include the 7805 uh, regulator. So you can either choose to short this across and power it from 5 volts or you can get your own 7805, your own two capacitors and then you can power this from anything from like about 7 to 14 volts or so. I like to power my project from 12 volts so I went ahead and added the 7805 regulator. There's a reset switch here 
and a power LED. I've already tried this out, tested it, and uh, plugged in my 12 volt and the power light lit, so that's all good. Over here are the modules. First module up is the CPU module. Not a whole lot going on there. There's basically the Z80 and a pull-up resistor. Um, broken out here to a header is uh, some additional pins, a bus ACK, uh, wait bus request, NMI and refresh. Um, so you could use those to implement single stepping or sharing the bus or even dynamic uh, memory. I think you need the refresh pin. Um, next up, let's look at the ROM board. So this is a 64K ROM. Um, only 8K of it is used at a time and uh, there's three jumpers in place there so you can select which 8K you want. And then there's some uh, glue logic here which I believe is a 74HET32. Right? I hope that's right. It's pretty straightforward. Um, here's the serial board. So online it calls this a 68B50. This part that I received is a 63B50. I'm assuming that uh, either one will work and the, uh, the seller did a simple substitution on that. We'll find out in a bit when we plug it in. Um, it's a little bit of 74 uh, glue logic here. In this case another 74HCT04 hex inverter. There's a header here that you can use to connect an FTDI cable. That will allow you to use your USB port instead of having to have a 9-pin serial port on your computer. I'm going to be doing that. I haven't had a computer with a 9-pin serial port in a while. Um, there's provisions here for the Max 232 serial driver and some capacitors that you could use if you actually did want to add your 9-pin uh, serial port. I'm not going to do that. Uh, next up is clock board, megahertz crystal, and then it's got a 7404 hex inverter, um, a couple of capacitors, a couple of resistors. It's a provision here for another reset switch. You can either put your reset switch on the uh, clock board or you can put it on the back plane. I chose to put mine on the back plane. And then finally we have the RAM board. Uh, this is the only one that I had some trouble assembling. And the problem I had was that the, uh, the right angle header would not fit the holes in the PC board. The holes were just a tiny bit too small. So I don't know if the seller, if his PCB um, layout was a little off, or if the board fab house just put too much plating on there, or uh, what went wrong, but I just couldn't jam those pins into there. But I did have a straight header from my junk box so I put that on there and then just soldered the straight header down flush so I think that's going to work just fine. There's a 62256 uh, static RAM uh, that is a 32 kilobyte RAM then there's also some more uh, 74 glue logic there's a 74 HCT04 um, inverter and there is a 74 HCT32 so to put this thing together, I'm going to start here with the uh, clock module. We always want to make sure we put everything in the right place. Clock module, we want to line up the ground pin. Next up, let's, uh, what should we do now? Let's do the serial board next. Now, uh, the seller's marked pin 1 on these. So you want to make sure pin 1 goes where it's supposed to go. Let me put the serial port over here. How about we add a CPU? Pin 1 here is over there. Let's put our CPU. Now how about... Um, static RAM. This one, pin 1, is up here. So I don't know why he did uh, some of the boards facing this way and some of the boards facing that way. It's, um, okay, this one is the ROM board. Pin 1 is over there. Okay. 
see so yeah, I've got the two boards facing this away. Their pin ones are there, and the other two boards facing this away. Um, their pin ones are also lined up properly, so that's all of the boards installed. Next thing we need is an FTDI cable. This isn't included, but I bought one of these on eBay. So inside of the plug, there's an FTDI chip. Probably can't see it on the camera, but this is slightly translucent plastic. I can see there's some stuff in there. Then it's broken out to a header. Already marked up the white mark where pin one is on the header. And I put a white dot on that header because you don't want to plug that in backwards. And now we have our serial interface that we can plug into our modern computer. Okay, so before I try it out, I have to show one little spot where it tricked me. Um, I tried it out once and there was no output and it took me a while to figure out what was wrong because there were signals on the bus but it just wasn't working right and what it turned out to be is these uh, this header here that I thought was optional it's actually marked in their uh, link so I think the uh, the designer of the kit wanted these things uh, soldered across so what I did is I put a header in and I jumpered the three of them that are necessary that would be weight uh, bus request and NMI. Those are active low signals, so by pulling them high, um, we disable that signal and the CPU will work properly. Uh, the other two, bus ACK and refresh, I believe those are output signals from the CPU, but uh, not that up on my Z80, so I'm not sure, but I left those two unjumpered. Okay, so we've got this ready to go. It's powered up. The USB serial cable is uh, installed. Um, I've checked it shows up on COM3 on this laptop. Um, I've opened up a terminal program on the COM3 at 115,200 baud. Let me reset the uh, RC2014. So we can see Z80 single board computer by Grant Searle. Cold or warm start? Cold start, memory top. Okay, so we're running Z80 Basic version 4.7b. Let me type in a simple program. Remember some basic. Then as soon as I hit run, there it's just outputting hello world over and over again out the serial port. So it uh, works. Now let's try to do some more interesting things with it. So I also ordered another board from the uh, the seller of the kit, and that is this uh, digital I/O board. Open this up. So what we have here is this is going to have a series of uh, LEDs, eight LEDs. All these uh, little green ones. and then eight uh, little push button switches so we can use that to do some uh, interactive human interface kind of a front panel uh, type of situation so let me solder that up and we'll try it out all right so here is the digital io board i finished soldering it up it's got a total of eight uh, push buttons and a total of eight leds i think they go from uh, least significant bit on the left side to most significant bit on the right side which is kind of uh, backwards of what i would have expected but we can still uh, deal with it in our code uh, it's got uh, a couple of chips a 74 hct 245 74 hct 374 so those are a uh, latch for driving the leds and uh, a buffer for reading the push buttons and then over here we have a 74HCT138 that does the address decoding. Um, so there's several links from the uh, 74HCT138 uh, to the address pins. Okay, so the way the uh, designer of the kit set it up, the two lowest links I believe are A0 and A1, and this one here is uh, A7. So what they're doing here with A7, they're feeding it into an active low uh, select input on the uh, 74 HCT 138 and what that'll do is it'll put these ports on everything um, below um, 80 hex 
So what I've learned of the kit is that the serial part is on uh, 80 hex through uh, BF hex. It blocks out those addresses. This one here will use up the addresses below 80 hex. Uh, the two ports are on input and output port zero. So it'll um, you'll be able to find them at uh, uh, port zero, port 10, port 20, port 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 um, hex. Okay, let's uh, plug it in and try it out. Plug it into this slot here. Right in the front so we have kind of a display panel and we'll get the laptop out. Okay, let's try this out. Hooked up to the laptop. Plug in power. It's like by default it lights up all of the LEDs. Let me see if I can zoom in a little. That's a re So it's plugged in. By default we can see all of the LEDs are lit. So I'm going to do this uh, program that is a uh, Cylon LED effect demo program. Uh, it was provided by the, uh, the guy who developed the kit and I modified it a little bit to add a few extra features and it's going to make the lights go back and forth. So we will, let's see, first let's reset. Now we will load the program and run it. So you can see it's stepping through the lights. Um, as I said before, this is a very simple demo program. I did modify it so that the push buttons do something and the push buttons, what they will do is change the speed that it chases back and forth. So each one will be uh, twice the delay of the previous one. So you can see it just slowing down. There's the slowest speed. Let's go back to the fastest speed. So that's, you know, what you can do with uh, some LEDs and some buttons and a microprocessor, um, 1980s style. Okay, this next program is simply going to count as fast as the basic uh, interpreter that's running can count and display the count uh, binary on the uh, LEDs. So you can see it's going, uh, it, it's going really, really fast. You can't even see the first. Uh, can't even see the first four of them uh, going, but you can see the fifth one blinking um, as it's doing its binary counting. Again, remember that the uh, least significant bit is on the left and the most significant on the right. Let me add a little bit of delay. Okay, let's try this. There, now we can kind of see um, binary in action. So yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's pretty simple to interact with this uh, demo board. Uh, Basic has a has an INP function which will read a port so you just INP from port 0 will give you the status of all 8 switches and it has an out function so if you out uh, port 0 um, it will display on the 8 LEDs doesn't, doesn't get much simpler to program than that that's it for this video please tune into the next video where I will add some Nixie tubes and a real time clock and turn the retro computer into a Nixie tube clock Thank you for watching my video. Please visit my website at www.smbaker.com for more electronics projects and sandrail stuff. Bye.